learn a thing or two from even the most uh, peculiar people. Observe. Hello, revolting slob. Uh, yes, well, if I might have your attention for just a moment, you see, I'd like to teach our viewers a few new words. What do I got to do? Well, you could first stop picking your teeth. That would be helpful. No. Just for later. <laughs> well, that really is gross, but I know you've got to be you. Okay, everyone. Is the revolting slob being A, repetitive, B, repentant, or C, repulsive? The correct answer is C, repulsive, meaning utterly gross or disgusting. <laughs> Revolting slob, what is that you're eating? Yes, those look like high-fat potato chips smothered in salt and artificial flavors. Can't be very good for you. And the grease is so icky on your fingers. Well, everybody, is what the revolting slob eating? A, unholy, B, unwholesome, or C, unheeded? The correct answer is B, unwholesome, which means plain old not good for you. Gotta go! You're not going out like that, are you, revolting slob? Yeah! Don't you think you should say hello to Mr. Soap and Mr. Sponge first? Well, everyone, does the revolting slob need A, detonating, B, disengaging, or C, disinfecting? The correct answer is C, disinfecting, which means to say bye-bye to Mr. Bacteria and Mrs. Germ. Shall we review? Picking food out of your mouth is really quite repulsive. You really shouldn't eat such high-fat junk food. It's very unwholesome. And if you can't remember the last time you bathed, you're probably in need of disinfecting. Well, that's enough for today. Try these new words out on somebody the next chance you get. Oh, and by the way, detonating. It means exploding into a million bits and pieces. No slobs were hurt in the filming of this show. Party. 
party. Good evening. Welcome to our haunted and happening haunted house party. There's a plethora of fright awaiting you as our guest of honor has just arrived. And it's up to you to figure out who our guest is. I'll even give you the first clue. Tonight's mystery guest couldn't seem to stick to one occupation. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Sorry to keep you waiting. It was only five minutes. Besides, he gave me time to design a more efficient manner of flying machine. In five minutes? <laughs> Not the entire five minutes. I used the balance of the time to paint a portrait of your supper party. Didn't you paint that the last time you were here? You mean the last supper party? Yes, I did. I love supper parties. I painted them religiously. Madam Lisa would love you to paint her. And I will. I just love to paint a Madam Lisa as long as she doesn't mourn when I do. I love that cute little smile of hers. She'll be most pleased. Tell me, being that most of the guests here are dead, I should be able to find a healthy skeleton among them, shouldn't I? It's for a new anatomy of text I'm developing. I know, just the fellow. He's rather thin, but willing. Splendid. Please ask him if he'd be available. Of course. If he asks, what should I say you do? Simple. Just tell him I'm an inventor, painter, sculptor, astronomer, musician, biologist, anatomist, philosopher, mathematician, and all-around good guy. Busy fellow, isn't he? Do you know who he is? He painted The Last Supper and Lisa the Mona, designs air machines, anatomy texts, as well as being an astronomer, musician, and everything else you could ever be. Our mystery guest is... Leonardo da Vinci, at your service. Would you like to hear what else I can do? I don't really think we have the time because we are out of here! See you next time on Haunted House Party. Walla Washington Zoo. This week we're going to. Ah! <laughs> Eddie Bull, he's at the moon. He really is incredible. He's simply the best of the bunch. There's simply no disguising. But he's so appetizing that we want him for a lunch. <laughs> You know, when I went to zookeeping school, they never mentioned this getting eaten part. Whew. So, let's figure out which animal swallowed me whole. <laughs> okay, here's the first clue. This animal likes to hang out in groups called parties. Parties! Parties! Uh-huh, uh-huh, party, party, party. <laughs> oh. Though mainly found in Central Africa, it's also gone up in space. Whee! <laughs> when it's sad, it squeezes his eyes shut, but can't shed a single tear. Good thing, because they don't carry tissues. <laughs> now here's the last clue. This almost human-like animal uses tools to find its food. Bet it doesn't have to set the table, though. <laughs> you got it? It's the chimpanzee! <laughs> <laughs> the chimpanzee! Cute little fella, ain't he? <laughs> Somebody throw him a banana. <laughs> okay, they're social animals that hang out in groups called parties. They're from Central Africa, but have also been sent into space. Chimps express emotions, but are unable to shed tears. And they use sticks and other devices to forage for food. <laughs> Uh-oh, I gotta work on my leg! He's at the moon. He really is incredible. And we want him for our lunch. <laughs>
Ahoy, matey! Shiver me timbers! Yo ho ho! Look alive, ye lollygaggers! I'm the incredibly dead Captain Bones! I've been sailing the seven seas for an eternity, and I'll tell ya, I'm a bored stiff. The only thing that saves me from going stark raven mad is making up math puzzles using nothing but me own bones. Now watch closely, and just do as I say, or I'll surprise the life out of ye. Just watch me bones. Let me show you what I mean. Now, ye know that one and one don't come to six, but there's a way to fix her up so she makes sense. And you can do it by moving only one of me bones. Can you see how? There ain't nothing to it. Seven minus one equals six, you finger and toe counting calculator needing mathematical moron. Got the idea now, you clog dancing, karaoke loving owners of sewing machines? I hope so, cause here's one for ye to puzzle out without me help. Just let me shuffle up me bones. Does one plus two equal eight? Course not. It equals but three, you nail buffin' pajama party and sorority sisters. To fix me bones, you're to move only one, just like I showed ye not a moment ago. And hands off all me other bones, you vultures. What's the matter, you passel of old ladies? Must I hold your hand while you're crossing the street? So be it. Here's a much-needed clue. Two of me numbers need to change. Another thing. The two looks just fine the way she is. Does that open your eyes just a wee bit? Here's a final hint, you mouse-fearing housewives. The one and the eight both need to get bigger. Can you do that by moving just one of me bones? Enough's enough. I can't take no more of your hemming and hawing, you scallywags. Here's the answer. Arr, seven plus two equals nine, as if you had a clue in your head. Arr, your math senses must be dulled by all that cream rinse and conditioner you put in your hair. You're not fit to be puzzle-solving pirates. Arr. With Carol Chaos and her newest smash single, I Gotta Limp It. Whenever I go out, I think I'm looking hot. But I look into the mirror and I see that I'm actually not. Cause I got a limp it, a limp it. It keeps growing every day. A limp it, a limp -imp. Man, did 
did that girl mix it up? That was Carol Chaos with I Got a Pimple. Get it? And now it's time for another commercial spot. Hey guys and gallants, when yours truly has to get up early, I like to stop in at Johnny Jumble's Fecky Foe Stop. Jump in Johnny's Fecky Foe to pick me up and make me go. If your day is starting slow, try Jump in Johnny's Fecky Foe. Made fresh from imported Fecky Foe beans, Johnny Jumble's Fecky Foe goes down smooth. Ow! But to make it easier, why not order it by its unscrambled name? Coffee at Johnny Jumble's Coffee Shop. And now it's time for... Scrambling Sports with Billy Bull. Thanks, Johnny. And today, we take a look at the latter side of sports with former Rookie of the Year, Tom Zapazzi. Superstar Khan Zapazzi caught more than a good game in the ninth inning of last night's contest. With two outs and the score tied, Zapazzi hit a 3-2 pitch over the center field fence and off the head of a fleeing purse snatcher, knocking him unconscious and winning the game. Scrambling hats off to Khan Zapazzi. I mean, Mark Piazza. And that's it from the world of sports. And now back to Henjo. I mean, Johnny. And now it's about time to sail this old showboat into the sunset. So until tomorrow, this is... Jumpin' Johnny Bunchell! That's Jumbo. Dig it. <laughs> it's time to play! Ten seconds! Where you've got to read between the lines and think up the answers before time runs out. So now you know how to play, you're on your own. You got ten seconds. The answer is... Head over heels. <laughs> Next one. The answer is right between the eyes. What's next? Did you get it? It's feeling under the weather. You got 10 more seconds to get the next one. The answer is turning over a new leaf. <laughs> hey! Well, that's it for now. So keep your feet on the ground and your head in the clouds. Until it's once more time to play, 10 seconds! <laughs> Good job. Work. Hey there, next game, coming up! Finish. Game cartridge loading, check. Hello, I'm Lens McCracken, ace photo sleuth. Word to the punks out there, don't do the crime, because McCracken will make you do the time. Have a seat, baby. I need your help in figuring out my latest batch of photos. Then, after we have all the clues, sit back in wonder as I use my razor-sharp deductive reasoning to solve the crime. It was a day like any other day, except for one thing. It was different. The pizza tasted bad, real bad. And that's why I call this case, the case of the terrible tasting pizza. Check out these photo clues and see what you get. Whoa, I zoomed in way too close here. Can you help me figure out what it is? Why don't you try taking a swing at it? 
Holy cow, this close-up came out kind of cheesy. In fact, it's really grating on me. Got any clues? Hmm, I'm all out of ideas. How about pitching me your ideas? Study them all carefully. Well, I don't know how you're doing, but this looks like a job for my dependable darkroom computer, the Solutionator. So, here's the first close-up. Did you figure it out? It's a tennis racket. Smashing, kid. What's the next photo? If I don't get this one, this case will be in shreds. A cheese grater. But I haven't sliced and diced this case yet. Let's step up to the plate and find out what's the final photo. So, here's the close-up. Hmm. It's a baseball! Now it's time to solve the case and really hit it out of the park. The inept baseball manager brought the wrong equipment to the baseball game. He brought tennis rackets. So, when the slugger hit the baseball out of the park, the fielder tried to stop it with the racket and the string shredded the baseball, which flew up into the concession stand where they were making pizza. The shredded baseball landed on the pizza as the cook was grating the cheese so he didn't notice what had happened. Thus, a terrible tasting pizza. Time to go home, cause the game's over and the case is closed. It's as plain as the nose on your face. That is, the nose on the face of Lens McCracken, Photo Snoop. It's time for Crash Box Rewind, where we flash back through the show and remind you how smart you really are. Does one plus two equal eight? Curse not. To fix me bones, you're to move only one. Brr, seven plus two equals nine, you nail buff on pajama party and sorority sisters. It's the chimpanzee! <laughs> They're social animals that hang out in groups called parties. They're from Central Africa, but have also been sent into space. He painted the Last Supper and Lisa the Mona, designs air machines, anatomy texts, as well as being an astronomer, musician, and everything else you could ever be. Leonardo da Vinci, at your service. Shall we review? Picking food out of your mouth is really quite repulsive. You really shouldn't eat such high-fat junk food. It's very unwholesome. And if you can't remember the last time you bathed, you're probably in need of disinfecting. Well, that's it for now. See you next time.